The Pro One fender struts on all the Pro One products, their um, Pro Quads, their soft tails, their 5.5 chassis, their 8.5 chassis, they all carry this same fender strut, which is good. They bolt in with studs from the inside of the fender and thin nylock nuts. The struts are chrome, and when you flip them on the inside, once again, the thinking thoughts of the states that have to have turn signals or OEM bikes. There's grooves cut in here that'll hold an 18 gauge wire and bring it up to the mounting area pass through for the turn signal. In other words, your turn signal wires are not inside your fender. They're not in with your tail light. They stay completely separate and hidden by the fender strut. Now I spoke of the relief cut on the front fender spacers before. This same relief cut is in the rear fender struts that allows the strut to be put on neatly and to clear the paint on the edges which will go to pop off or bust loose as soon as you tighten up the rear fender or it will smash within an hour of you assembling the bike I guarantee it this prevents that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the studs we're gonna install the fender struts we're gonna snug the nuts we're not gonna tighten them and then I'm gonna put a level across the back of the two fender struts when they're on and the reason I'm putting the level on is to bring them in the mocking stage level to the frame which I'll show you then we're gonna clamp in the same fashion that we did the front fender the rear fender in this case the Pro One rolling chassis that was provided and featured has the holes drilled in it already these were pre-existing when you get this fender in this kit these holes are not drilled we're going to show you how to drill these holes by making a pattern and crossing it over to get real close to what you need so now we'll step over install the fender struts and then from there we'll slip in the rear fender okay the small studs that I showed you just a second ago are inserted from the inside of the frame at the rear and uh, obviously the never sees was installed and just screw them in by hand there's no need to tighten them up at this point I'm gonna reach over and grab the fender strut okay and the fender strut just simply slips over and the two nuts will follow and then from there we'll go back and get the fender okay we've installed the opposite fender strut same procedure as the other side that we showed on film we've got it snugged up we don't have it tight but we don't want it to move around now I've already protected the other side of the fender strut with two pieces of duct tape now when you install this duct tape you have to be careful because it will pull the chrome off especially if there was chroming that was not done so you just barely not done well it, you just barely pull it off and let it set barely put it over just lightly don't rub it in don't scrub on it you don't need to you're gonna need to get underneath here and there now we've got protection what this is is protection for the clamp so so the clamp doesn't scratch the chrome these rubber tips that come on these fall off after the first day or so now also what I've done is I've taken my scissor jack I put it under the back of the swing arm by the shock tower loosened up my strap jacked it up and I'm gonna remove my block what I want is a natural sitting position now keep in mind this bike does not have the engine in it does not have the trance in it oil tank very heavy components you know there's probably 300 pounds right there so 
that point, lower the bike back down. Make sure the scissor jack is clear. And we'll check the distance between the lower frame and the top. Okay, without getting exact, I have four and five eighths of an inch at the back portion of the chassis. Now four and a half would be my, that would probably be a minimum low ride. I mean some people slam these to the ground. I don't recommend you do it. I'd like to see it and I probably will set it up at four and three quarter. But it's close enough to do my fender set for the rear which is important to the clearance and the rim and the way that the wheel looks in the rear. So at this point we're looking good. The bike is just in the stand. So what I'm going to do is take this level that I have, which is just a common level, I'm going to look at the bubble on the frame, see where I'm at, I'm not exactly plumb, and then I'm going to come back on the fender struts here. To come to the rear, you're going to be blocked in here to raise it up so you can get over and put your level on. If you stay at the front and you're mocking, move it as close as you can to the tire. If I pull down on this, you're probably not going to pick it up. You're not going to pick it up in the, in the camera too much, but I'm moving the back of this a good eighth of an inch. So what you want is you want both of these level, same level as the frame. That'll keep the fender square on the back of the bike. We're good there. Double check this. That's real close. You know, we're not, that's not rocket science here. We're not putting a doorway in or anything, but we know that these are damn close to what the frame is as far as straight coming off the back. So at that point, we can set the rear fender in, which in your case will not have these holes in it. It'd be nice. If you can get this in a rolling chassis or pre-drilled holes, I highly recommend it. It'll save you a lot of work. Now what I've done is it doesn't matter here. This is a primered part. I'm not putting the fender in from the top. I'm moving it in over the tire. You cannot do this after it's painted. You will wreck your new paint job. What you have to do when it's painted is spread these apart or loosen them way, way up so you can get them out of the way. Sometimes I'll have people hold them apart, two different people hold them apart, set the fender in, then start the bolts. We're just primered and we can get away with scraping it in there, so we're okay. You want to kind of get a little close where you think it should be. Clamp it in the front. Try not to move these clamps after you clamp them because they'll dig into the duct tape and cut through and scratch the chrome, something you don't want to do. Once you take this part out of the bag, you own it. The last thing you want to do is damage it and have to buy another one, and I've had to do that. Okay. There's a few things you need to look for. Number one, before you start playing with it and how it's going to look, take a good look at the front of the fender. Slide the fender back, and this is on almost all models. Slide the fender back to where it's just over the top of the crossbar here, and about quarter to eighth of an inch gap. Now this is where you want basically that fender to stay. I'm over the top, eighth to a quarter, and now I'm going to look at the center right here. And I'm going to look at the overall. Now overall, this is the way the fender is going to look on the bike. I can see that the rim lip is not showing real good. So what I'm going to do is just take and slide it up a little. Now's the time I have to do it. So this is roughly where the wheel is going to set when everything is completely built. I know that just by looking. If you'll pay attention to five, six threads on each end, remember that you're fine. I've got, I've got the fender pretty close. As I stand square to the fender, 
The rim lip is showing evenly all the way around the fender in the arch. Okay, I'll stick my hand onto the back. I like a lot of room at the back of the fender, especially if you're gonna put a tail light back here. If you have to, slide it back a little more. Let go of everything after you get it clamped. That's why you're clamping it. And step back and look at it. Okay, the back is too low. The fender needs to go forward just a hair. Too low and forward. Step back. I've done this four, five, six times. And I know that this is the deepest it's going to be. So I'm sticking my hand up underneath between the top and the fender. And I've got a good three inches in between the top of the tire and the inside of the fender. I'm comfortable with that, but it could be just a little bit more. By the norm, I usually leave an eighth of an inch. I have about a quarter here. I usually leave an eighth of an inch showing from the bottom of the fender strut to the bottom of these fenders. I've worked with a lot of these Russ Wordemont fenders. So I know that I can count on that lip being even on both sides. This fender looks good to me at this point. I feel comfortable that the fender's marked correctly and where I want to put it. Once again, I got eh, a little too much of a gap here, but nothing a piece of rubber won't take care of. It looks like my seat's going to come in over my fender struts okay. I, I got a little bit of a gap here coming in, but it's standard with the wide chassis, a gap in between the fender strut and the fender. I've got good clearance at the back of the fender for a tail light or no tail light, depending on what we put on the license plate bracket or not. I'm square to the motorcycle. This rim lip matches this arch. And I'm ready to drill it, mark it and drill it. Now, I'll tell you right now that I'm gonna mark this where I want it. This is not where the last person drilled it. I've already got a hole almost showing right here. This is where I would put the fender on this motorcycle and every motorcycle comes out a little different depending on the style fender that you use. The Pro 1 fenders are 12 inches wide for these eight and a half inch rims which is almost 10 inches a tire. So there's plenty of fender there, there's plenty of room to work with it. So everybody's a little different and you get into personal achievement on taste and location. So the last guy that drilled this wanted the back of the fender a little bit lower than I did. So I do the same thing and I trace it as tight as possible. That's important to get a nice sharp sharpie and get in there as tight as you can, as far up as you can. Do it. Now, I have both sides clamped. That's not to say that the fender's not out of square. So another little trick I'll do is I already know where the bubble is on the frame and the bubble is and I'll take and put the bubble underneath this fender and not all the backs are cut straight so you have to be careful. If you can get it in there and take a look at it, this fender looks very close to what the rest of the bike is set at. If not, I'd back up 10-15 feet and start siding the fender for level and square going right up the middle of the chassis because it will show up bad when you settle down and get the whole bike built and the paint job on if this fender is put on crooked. So it's balanced. I've got this side clamped and I'm gonna mark it just like I did the other side. And the reason that we have to mark it is these are called blind fender struts. There's no bolts here. Everything is blind. All the bolts go in from the inside. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna break in film. I'm gonna carefully, slowly, and I mean slowly, have to sit here and peel this duct tape off after I get the fender out. Stay close to it, pull it off slow, don't yank it. 
If you yank it, you could pull up a piece of chrome that's going to cost you some money. But anyway, we'll move to that, and then we'll show you how we'll make a template from what we've drawn in order to drill the fender. Okay, we've unclamped the fender. We've taken the duct tape off the fender struts carefully, and now we've made a template. We'll set the fender aside, and let's disregard the drill, drilled holes that you see. They're not exactly in the same location into which I set it up. Whoever set it up before wanted the fender a little bit different. Then what I've done is removed a fender strut. Um, you can do this with poster board or simple cardboard box, whatever you can get your hands on, and an X-Acto knife or a carpet knife. And just simply set the fender strut on the cardboard, trace it with the Sharpie, go to the other fender strut, the other side, place it over. Actually, you can do them both and just flip them. Same fender strut. Trace it. Cut these out in the center of the black line if you can. That's about as close as you can get it. These are just rough templates. They're crude, they're rough, they're not exact. Don't absolutely 100% hold to these. Then reinstall the fender strut back on the bike. At this point, you can take the fender strut template, put it up here and see how close it is to the black etched line that we made when the fender was clamped on. Which, okay, I've, we've cut it out pretty close. Roughly, we've got a transfer template. That's exactly what this is. So we've gone back to the bike with this piece of cardboard. We've taken the fender strut, checked it here. Everything looks the same. Checked it to the fender. Everything looks close enough. And now we need some holes. All we do, the holes are blind. They're only in one side. They're not in the other. They're blind. It's called what's a blind hole strut. Set the cardboard on. Get an X-Acto knife. It's hard for me to hold this at an angle. But you're just going to get an X-Acto knife and tape this with masking tape in several different points. Here, 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 and here to keep it square. But once you get it set on here, just simply take the knife and etch out the hole. Move to the next one, etch out the hole. Do that on all four holes. This is marked left. This is marked right. It was cut out, but we know what, what is what. In the same fender strut, they're going to be equal. The hole distances are equal in both struts. We'll simply take the other piece of cardboard or poster board and cut out the four holes in the slots. At that point, now you've got a transferable hole. Now we can move to the fender, match it up to where it was before, take your Sharpie. Now these holes aren't real clean. They can be a lot cleaner than what they are now by moving something through it or a little more time and patience. And just simply mark round circles in those holes. After those four are marked, do the other side of the fender. Once you've done that, take an eighth inch drill bit, pilot drill the center of the hole as close as you can. One, two, three, four. After you've drilled them as close as you can, in eighth inch, both sides, take them then to two steps over three eighths. I don't, I don't know exactly what size bit that is. But anyway, a couple size over three eighths. That'll allow the room of the three eighths bolt to have some play and movement in it in case you need to adjust the fender or fine tune it when you put the final mounting on. Open those four up, open these four up. Now the fender's drilled one and only time that you're going to have it drilled. After you get done drilling the fender, reinstall it. The same way you took it off. The bike height, the rear wheel in. Sometimes with the rear wheel in, it's real tricky to get all the bolts in. If you get one in the rear and one in the front on each side, that'll allow you to look at the other two bolts in the center and make sure that they're going to fit. Make sure they're aligned properly. 
Okay, we've got through drilling the holes in the fender. We've remounted the fender on the chassis with our button head, fender washer bolts that are supplied with the uh, fender struts. If you notice, I didn't install any of the fender washers, the large washers that'll displace the weight against the sheet metal in there. And I didn't in install completely 100% all the nuts and bolts that go with the assembly. But I did put four critical bolts in, the two in the rear and the two in the front. And those are snugged up. They're not tightened up completely, but they are pulled tight with the fender struts tight. Now at that point, we had to use the holes that we had set before that were pre-drilled. You can see where the template is off a little bit, so you can look all you want. The fender itself has been pushed down. We're settled. I've backed off at 10 feet or so. Everything is square on the bike. The fender is not tilted in the chassis. Looks good. We're there. We don't have to open up any holes. We don't have to make any minor adjustments. I can also see the hole here and the hole here on each side of the fender strut by looking up in there and seeing that they're clear to go into the threads with the two bolts when we do the final assembly. So now I know 100% we'll be able to bolt this rear fender on and tighten it up. And now from here, We've mocked up the back of the bike. We've set our ride height roughly. We've set our belt area roughly, position of pulley, I should say. We've got our rear fender mounted, and we're gonna move to the oil tank. Now the oil tank is a Pro One oil tank that's designed for the Pro One chassis. In other words, everything is flagged on the side here, comes in nice and neat to the side of the frame. It comes with this mounting bracket this billet mounting bracket, nuts and bolts and accessories. Has an oil cap included and the top mounting bolts with rubber grommets. The bottom, it also works as the battery tray naturally. And the bottom is fitted for eighth inch pipe fittings to plumb for the oil lines. This is a drain. This is your inlet to motor. This is your return breather, upper crankcase, and this is your return oil, oil filter. They're very simple, we'll be going over all that. This is a simple assembly. All we're gonna do is place it in the chassis and make sure that it lines up, which on pre-fit has already been done by Pro One. Okay, I've unpacked all the additional accessories here. The back bracket is assembled. There's a spacer put underneath here for some reason for this chassis. These two nuts and washers have been implied with the rubber grommets. It's a simple screw together deal. You can visually look at that and see that it's not a problem. What I'll do is the two nylocks right here, they have to remain loose because these holes are slotted quite a bit and it makes a big difference in the position of the oil tank when you set it in. There's a big slide area right there. So just snug but movable. Okay, let's install the oil tank. And we'll do that by bringing it into the chassis, which is real easy to do. There's a rear splash guard that goes underneath this oil tank in between the tire and the frame. At this point of the game, there's absolutely no need to install that for mocking up the chassis. It's only a uh, splash shield for the rear tire, and it won't interfere with anything that we're doing. I've installed two rubber grommets on the top of the frame, which there's tabs for, welded on, ready to go. And we get a washer. And a nice tapered head bolt in the top. For the most part, this is not, it's pretty unnecessary to install this oil tank. But I like to install all the sheet metal parts on the bike, 100%, before we send it out to paint. Because you just never know what you might need to do. And in my case, I make a lot of frame modifications and sheet metal modifications to fill in little holes and gaps of personal things that I do to bikes. 
to uh, add individual touch to them. Well, this is the time that you do that, is right now. So we basically snugged up the back, snugged up the top, we're rubber mounted. We've got a good gap here, which I haven't checked yet. What we're looking for is we're looking for an even gap through the side here, which that even gap, just about get the Allen through there. And the same thing on the other side. Now if the other side is greater, which it is, all I'm going to do is slide the oil tank back just a hair and close the gap up. You need to leave this gap open and not tighten it all the way up against the frame because it's rubber mounted and it'll shake when the engine's running. What we're going to do, this liberator kit that we have here with this style wheel, with this style fender, handlebars, front end, is to complete it by setting on the aluminum gas tank. Now I'll tilt it up and I'll show you that it's came with some rubber. You get a rubber sheet with it and the rubber's been cut and glued in to the inner roll pan on the gas tank. That's so it's in there. It's not going to fall out on us. And you'll see two bungs here and here, and then two forward here and here. Okay? There's a vent in the gas tank. This is an inner tube that goes up and allows the top up here by the gas cap to vent so that the tank doesn't pressurize. And then there's a crossover. These are the crossover ports for the gas line crossover from side to side and then the petcock hole. Now aluminum gas tanks are extremely, they're sensitive to vibration, extremely sensitive to vibration. So it's important when we check the mounting of this gas tank out to make sure that it does not hit the frame at any point because it'll tear right through the aluminum and you have got a big problem after your paint job is done. So at this point what we want to do is we've got our rubber in we're ready to go. We just walk over, set it on the bike. Push it forward roughly an inch to an inch and a half, but I use two fingers. I take two fingers, move it forward, and that is a real standard setting of where you can place the gas tank on the frame. The back of the frame stops, or the back of the gas tank stops at the what's called the Y of the frame, where the Y takes off. It stops. It's clear. The setting underneath the frame here, I can run my hand underneath it. We're clear. It gets real tight here with the engine. Rocker box covers. If you need to pull them, you need good clearance right here. As long as you're at that point, you're okay. The front, I know I've got two fingers here, tight two fingers, which is good. Gives it a nice, clean, you know, appeal at the front of the neck. So basically, the gas tank's set. I know for a fact, this Pro 1 combination, that when the top clamps articulate or you turn the wheel, that the, that the stem or the handlebars, the stem is going to stop short of hitting the gas tank, won't come all the way back. When you use other parts or whatever you buy, that, that is definitely a problem. So you have to be very careful with that. I've seen guys take brand new customs off the rack, turn the handlebars to move them out of the way, and smash the tree into the gas tank and dent the tank. Bad feature to do. This won't happen here. The gas tank mount is provided with the aluminum gas tank by the manufacturer, and it's basically pretty simple. It's a rubber mount that goes up against the frame. You lightly tighten the bolt. This pushes against the top tube of the frame. Two bolts go in the front part of the gas tank and the front is mounted. At the rear, there's a cross plate that goes in the rear two holes, takes two bolts, very simple, very clean, rubber mounted, two minutes to install. What we're going to do is we're just going to slide this up in here and for reasons that, you know, to show you real quick, you have one more bolt to mark a hole for, then we're done mocking the frame. Okay. And what I've done is I'm looking underneath the gas tank. I want to make sure I get all my angles of the block right. And I'm going to go in for a little bit more on here. 
and I'll pull that out. Just to make sure, I'm going to completely install the mount.